Hello everyone and welcome to this interview with Enterprise Architect Mark Wilson. Um, today we'll be talking to Mark about his social media journey and his thoughts on social media and blogging. Um, so first off Mark, can you talk about what influenced or inspired you to start using your social media and your blog? Okay, um, well I started blogging in about 2004 and we didn't even use the term social media then mm -hmm. so but web blogs you know they, they were still web blogs not yeah. blogs you know they they were um, starting to become popular and i just wanted somewhere to store my notes mm -hmm. um, and then you know i thought we're putting it on the net that became useful to other people and um, it sort of took off so 13 years later and there's two and a half thousand posts up <laughs> a lot of times obviously Was that on the that. blog yeah on the blog yeah i'm pretty bad at remembering things and even today it surprises me when I, I I search and go oh yeah I wrote that um, but Twitter was a bit different um, mm -hmm. so um, when Twitter came out I, I really didn't get it I was like, yeah. Yeah, well, what is this thing um, and then I was watching a, a keynote video one day and I could see all the tweets on the hashtag alongside the video yeah. and I could see the conversation going on and I went ah that's it and it just suddenly clicked I opened an account started tweeting it a Microsoft event a few weeks mm. later and it sort of went from there. I like that was it, 40,000 tweets? Something like that, yeah, it's definitely my main oh, output now. That is, that is <laughs> steady incline. Yeah, tweets don't take very long. <laughs> um, in terms of when you did start off, when you finally got into Twitter, did you have a goal when you were going for it? And how did you then build your follower count up to one that's yeah. now strong following? Um, well, I didn't really have a goal. The site just sort of took off so as I wrote mm. more and more people read it and it sort of self perpetuates yeah. um, and then I put some ads on the page it started to make some money which was nice oh, uh, and then Google changed their algorithm and it stopped making money <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm not in it for the money though really um, there was a time around about 2005 where mm. uh, myself and one of my colleagues at the time a guy called Jamie Thompson who also went on to be an MVP um, we had a bit of an internal battle as to be the oh, company's yeah. most prolific bloggers. We were both there, like number one, number two. Um, me on infrastructure, him on data. But you know, really, as for followers, I'm, I'm not worried about the number of followers because it's more about the quality of those followers than it is yeah. the quantity. Um, ultimately, if you create good content, the followers will come naturally. And did you did you win your competition? Uh, well, we just just kept trading places, really, <laughs> and then eventually moved on to other things. So. <laughs> Uh, how much how much time obviously it can be a lot very time consuming to do the blogging as you said yeah. Twitter is much quicker and easy just to pinpoint 140 characters throw it out there how much time would you spend in general updating your blog or using Twitter social media daily so not enough and too much at the same <laughs> time so yeah I'd like to have more time to write blog posts but mm. you know I've got a, well a not so young family I've got two boys who are growing up quickly yeah. you know there's just more important things mm. at home. Um, and you've also got to be in the right frame of mind as well. So, yeah, sometimes I'm inspired to blog and, oh, yeah. and I make the most of it. And I've got loads of part written posts, and I actually uh, set up a Kanban board in um, mm -hmm. Office 365 Planner to try and organise things oh, a bit that's better. Yeah, um, Twitter's a lot easier. So you can tweet on the train or between mm -hmm. meetings. You know, just yeah, dip yeah. in and out. Um, but it's good to tweet at times when people are around, so either UK or US mm -hmm. business hours. And all too often I find myself catching up at bedtime when I should be sleeping. That's, yeah. that's not healthy. <laughs> yeah, I always say there's times to avoid is work times, more or less. Nine till five is yeah. just don't. Yeah. It's just a, a no because everyone's banging them out then. It's just pretty hard to get engagement. On topic of you saying that you've got lots of part written posts, what inspires you to, to make a post or to make a tweet? Is it um, it might be a conversation um, that I've had, it might be something that I've heard about and then you know, perhaps I've listened mm -hmm. to on a podcast and then I've got an opinion on it, <laughs> you know, either I agree or I think that's actually, no, that's not quite the way I would put it and there's another angle. Yeah. So, um, Often it's as a result of something that I've been doing that I've found difficult technically and then there's, there's a, oh yeah, I found this, I actually got it to work yeah. and this is how I got it to work and so that might be useful for other people. Cool. Um, on that note, do you think it's helped you engage better with other people in the tech industry or and it's helped by keeping you up to date with the topics that are 
hot for lack of a better word. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my personal brand, if, yeah, it sounds a bit pretentious, <laughs> but you know, people talk about personal branding, yeah. you know, uh, and that's been greatly enhanced with blogging and tweeting. So um, it's probably how I got my MVP award. Mm -hmm. uh, and although I'm not an MVP anymore, I'm still recognised by Microsoft by what their marketing folks call yeah. an influencer. Um, what do you get out of it all personally? Obviously, your job being what it is and your family time, you've got, you're a pretty busy dude, um, and you've got no real obligation to sit on social media and influence or blog and helping people out, but you do anyway, why is that? Narcissism? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, so, you know, I, I, I mentioned personal branding mm -hmm. a minute ago, and, and I think it's important in our industry. It's amazing how uh, often I meet people in real life that I've known virtually before that. Yeah. So sometimes that's in a business context, you know, you'll be on a customer site and they'll go, oh yeah, I know you. Mm -hmm. And it just helps as an icebreaker and yeah. things like that. Um, and um, I mean, just a bit of an anecdote, I once attended an interview where the interviewer told me that he read my blog. Uh, and so that was a bit of a curveball, really. <laughs> Frantically trying to remember what you had previously written. Yeah, yeah, well clearly I was in the room, so it can't have been that bad. <laughs> um, in terms of someone starting out, because obviously building a Twitter following is not yeah. easy to do, it's daunting, it's fluctuates, your followers fluctuate, people leave, yeah. people, so it's too easy to click follow one follow. Yeah. What would be your own personal advice for people starting out and hoping to become an influencer, to hoping to build their own following? Okay, well the first thing would be don't be daunted by, you know, Mm -hmm. by getting into it, you know, just dive in. Yeah. Uh, so dive in there, start retweeting other people, perhaps mm -hmm. you're not um, bold enough yet to you know, come up with your own opinions, but you can start saying, oh yeah, yeah I was interested in that, and you can either retweet or you can quote yeah. tweet it, um, if you think it's relevant. Tweet links to your own blog posts so mm -hmm. that, you know, that things come together there. Um, the more you tweet, the more followers you'll get, so it's just the way it is, yeah. but as I said earlier, it's not so much about the, the volume of, yeah. of followers, it's, it's you know, who those followers are. So you might have you know, 20, 40, 50 followers, mm -hmm. um, and if they're all people who are, you know, you're going to influence, mm -hmm. then that's much better than a bunch of spam. Oh yeah, totally. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say engage and reply, so don't just broadcast. Yeah. You know, um, be ready to, to um, answer to other people's tweets and things mm -hmm. like that, and you'll start to converse, and, and then you'll find that people start to follow you as well because yeah. you've got a view and an opinion. Um, and I think, you know, one big thing would be not to just tweet things to advertise your company. So we all want mm -hmm. to uh, support Rizual, um, but I don't retweet every well, Rizual post. Totally, yes. So, um, you know, my followers don't want to be marketed to, mm -hmm. um, so I, I tweet stuff about my work where it's not confidential mm -hmm. and you know it's in the public domain, and um, it's things that I've been involved in, yeah. or things that I've been you know I think we're doing really something special. Mm -hmm. So like the work that we're doing with education, I'm not yeah. directly involved in, mm -hmm. but I think that's a really unique thing about Rachel. So yeah, sometimes I'll retweet yeah. some of that stuff. Um, but I also mix it up with tweets from other people. Um, some of that's Microsoft content, some of that's sort of more general mm -hmm. CIO, CTO type content. Um, and probably about 10% personal stuff because uh, it just makes it a bit more personal. Human. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, sometimes I look at it and I've been ranting a bit. I better actually find <laughs> some, some real content to put out there. <laughs> um, and I think, yeah. Coming back to where you mentioned earlier, the number of tweets, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, yeah, 43,000 tweets, but that's over nine years. Yeah. So um, if you average that out, it's less than 15 a day. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, the vast majority of those were created when I was in a job where blogging was part, well, not so much blogging, tweeting was part mm -hmm. of my job. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's not, it doesn't need to be very many and it builds yeah. up very quickly. Um. How do you keep up to date with the latest tech news in order for you to then talk about it and, mm. and put your own opinion and stamp on it on social media? 
Okay, well, I listen to podcasts quite a lot, mm -hmm. um, and like lots of people at Ridgewell, I travel a lot, yeah. so, uh, you know, there's opportunities in the car, um, so I listen to uh, the Microsoft Cloud Show is one, mm -hmm. uh, there's another one by uh, Matt Ballantyne and Chris Weston called uh, W, I have to get this right, WD40 is the lubricant, isn't it, so yes, this is WB40, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that's worth checking out, uh, they've, they've done I think they're up to episode 14 now and they, okay. they talk about topics from a more of a business angle, mm -hmm. you know, trends in the industry and, you know, they, they've usually got some interesting views which usually inspire me to go, yes, and, you know, perhaps you know, trigger a blog post of it. Um, so, I'd like to read more blogs but just mm -hmm. don't get the time. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, it's a bit, bit of a, an irony there with some blogger who says he doesn't read blogs. Um, Twitter's a bit of an echo chamber, mm -hmm. uh, but I've created some lists for people who tweet interesting content. So yeah, I follow thousands of people, but mm -hmm. I don't really follow them. I've got uh, a CTO watch list, a Microsoft watch list, and a original list. Mm -hmm. And really, I try to keep up, up to date with all of those three. Okay. And then, you know, if, if you miss a few days, it really mm -hmm. doesn't matter. I kind of think of Twitter as being one of those things. It's a bit like a party when you walk into the room and you don't ask everybody what they've been talking about all night, you just join in the conversation yeah, at that point and analogy. at some point you leave, you know, and, and if you treat Twitter like that you can just dip in and yeah. out. Yeah. Um, thanks Mark for taking the time anyway to take this interview with us and tell us about your social media and blogging journey. No worries. For those interested, where can they read your tweets and your blogs? So uh, I tweet at Mark Wilson IT, so that's at Mark Wilson IT, uh, and you can find me online at uh, www.markwilson.co.uk or uh, markwilson.it. Excellent, thank you again. Okay, no worries.